Hi, I'm sitting here again with uh, Ross Tucker from the Science of Sport website, which you guys should really check out. It's, it's amazing stuff. You know, if you're interested in the Tour de France, if you're interested in, in track and field, if you're interested in marathon running, if you're interested in uh, any number of things where variables can be measured, um, that's a really, really good website to, to go and check out. It's a huge following. And uh, Ross has a, a Twitter handle as well that you might want to get involved with. What's that, Ross? It's at Science of Sports. At Science of Sports. So uh, check all those things out. So again, we're going to go back to the world of, uh, of, uh, of sports physiology and, and, and sports psychology. And we're going to talk about uh, something that's uh, been um, you know, in, in the scientific eye for a while in terms of endurance sports. And that's the whole concept of the central governor. You want to start off by just giving a, a rough definition of that? Yeah, and let me let me define what it is by starting off by saying what it's not. Okay. And I, I did my PhD on the central governor, but didn't call it that once in yeah. my thesis. Okay. Because I learned over the four years that it took to do the PhD that the term central governor was so offensive and divisive because yeah. people didn't understand what it meant. Okay. And I remember going to a scientific conference, ACSM, and, and one of the world's leaders in fatigue and the brain was pretty scornful about it and saying that it's, oh, it's this little man in your brain that tells you that you have to stop or slow down and that's completely ridiculous. It, like a <laughs> homunculus type theory. Yeah, like a yeah. little black box yeah. that exists somewhere in the, in the brain and, and when Professor Tim Noakes used the word for the first time, he, he borrowed it from a guy called A.V. Hill who was, I think, the only exercise physiologist ever to get the Nobel Prize for physiology. But Tim, Tim used it in the context of a of the whole brain and how it integrates in order to regulate exercise but it was misunderstood to mean a black box or a homunculus or a little man dancing around yeah, in your yeah. head that no one could figure out and and for reasons that I guess I can understand scientists were scornful of that yeah yeah but but what it was 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 a, a concept more than a structure and the concept is that when we exercise in a normal situation and by normal I'm talking about a 5K time trial, the New York or Chicago or London Marathon, anything where you are self-paced. Mm -hmm. You can slow down or you can speed up. Like you can Iron make that call. Or Iron Man as well. So All those yeah. kinds of events. Mm -hmm. As opposed to exercising in the laboratory where a physiologist will chuck you on a treadmill or on a bike and you have to just go until you drop. Okay. That, and, and those are artificial situations which teach us a lot about physiology at failure. Yeah, yeah. But it's quite different from what people actually do. Okay. And, and what the, so what self selection and the voluntary nature is what was Yeah, and that's where you can see regulation. Because okay. when you when you're forced to run 16k an hour or cycle at uh, 300 watts till exhaustion, you have no choice. Your physiology has to meet the demand. And so when you're self-paced, it's quite clear that you are able to regulate the pace in response to any number of dozens of physiological inputs. Mm -hmm. And that's what the central governor concept was. And because I avoided the term in my PhD, we, I started calling it more anticipatory regulation. Because mm -hmm. what the idea is, is that when we exercise, physiology is changing. We are using glycogen. We are generating heat, and so our body temperature is going up. We're producing metabolites like lactate. We are depleting other metabolites. Yeah. We are potentially challenging oxygen saturation and delivery to the muscles, to the heart, to the brain. And the brain has to be able to regulate all those systems. And the only way it can do that is by changing our pace. So in a nutshell, the concept is dozens of inputs, yeah. the ones I've listed, plus probably yeah, 30 yeah. that I haven't, are used in some calculation, not by one spot in the brain, but by yeah. the, the whole. And this includes emotional yeah, context, yeah. it includes psychology, it includes conscious and subconscious. And based on those inputs, and based on the fact that you know that you have to run 42 k's yeah. or cycle 180 plus or whatever the yeah. situation. 42 k's, by the way, is 26.2 miles. It's a marathon, so <laughs> yeah, I must convert my units. Um, you're in the middle of an exercise bout and you know the end point. Your brain knows the end point. It then regulates the output in order to defend the end point.